Now acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity. Mathematically, any time that we are dividing by a interval in time, we're really looking at the rate of change of the quantity above. In this case, this is the velocity. In other words, acceleration tells us how does velocity change with time. Let's look at an example. So let's say that we have a car which uh, is initially moving so let's say that v1 is equal to let's say it's moving really slowly at one meter per second and let's say that in 10 seconds it will go to a final velocity of 10 meters per second and let's just keep things relatively simple so let's say that the time interval at which it happens so let's say the delta t is 10 seconds as well now, in this case, the acceleration will be the change in velocity over the change in time. So if we're going from 1 to 10, our change in velocity is going to be 9 meters per second. And uh, this is going to be divided by, the, by our time interval, which is 10 seconds. So our acceleration will be 0 0.9. 0 .9 meters per second squared. It's important to know that the base units of uh, acceleration are meters per second per second or meters per second squared. The reason for that is because velocity is measured in meters per second, ms to the power of minus one. And then we're dividing by another second so s to the power of minus 1 divided by s, this is going to give us a base unit of meters per second to the power of minus 2. Okay, now let's have a look at an example of constant acceleration. If we were to drop an object A, let's say from a wall or from a window or something like that, etc., then this object in the absence of air resistance will be going down at a rate equal to the gravitational acceleration on earth which is g being equal to 9.81 meters per second per second if we were to plot a graph of the velocity against time it will look like a straight line graph we can see that over here in fact, we can even see that when the time is equal to one second, we would have, we would have acquired 9.81 meters per second speed. That's why the acceleration is 9.81 meters per second, twice that in two seconds, etc., etc. Now, the gradient of this graph, should we just call that, or should we just say the gradient of this graph will be our change in y divided by our change in x. However, we can see that we have the velocity over here on the y-axis divided by a change in whatever is on the x-axis, which is time. So we can see that in this case, in a v against t graph, the gradient gives us the rate of change of velocity, which is in fact the acceleration. So anytime we are interested in the acceleration and we have a uh, V against T graph, we need to be looking at the gradient. If we were to plot the acceleration for that case, because the gradient is constant and the acceleration is not changing, the acceleration against time for this particular case will just be a straight line like this. And in fact, this value here, we can even be a little bit more precise, would be 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, now let's have an example at, in which the acceleration varies. A very good example of that is the motion of a pendulum. If we were to release a pendulum, we're going to see that the pendulum will be moving initially let's say this way when it reaches the other side the velocity will be changing and the acceleration as well um, in itself will also be changing now if we were to plot a velocity against time graph I've done a little sketch over here we're going to notice a couple of things number one the velocity will be positive in one region then it will change direction 
and uh, it will be negative. Notice that in this case uh, there is some air resistance and we know that because the amplitude of the pendulum is steadily decreasing just like it would in real life. Now if we wanted to find the um, acceleration at let's say, I don't know, let's say this point, point A, uh, we cannot just take the gradients now because we have a nonlinear graph. So what we need to do in this case is to draw a tangent line. So this is really, really important. We need to draw a tangent line. And after we've drawn the tangent line, the acceleration will be the gradient of that tangent line. So this is how we find the um, acceleration when the velocity is nonlinear, we would just try and draw a tangent line like so and then find the gradient of it. Okay folks, hopefully that helps. Let's see if we can apply our knowledge to a few exam questions. Hey folks, so let's have a look at a past paper question from 2016, that's G481 from OCR Physics A. The first bit is asking us to define acceleration. Now, as we said above, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. We have to be quite careful not to write speed over here because acceleration has a direction and velocity is a vector quantity. Okay, explain why acceleration is a vector quantity. As we've just said, acceleration has a direction. So just simply writing it has a direction will explain this phenomenon. It's the rate of change of velocity, which is a vector quantity, and therefore acceleration will also be a vector quantity. Okay, let's have a look at part C. So figure 1.1 shows the graph of the velocity against time for a moving object. Describe the motion of the object from t is equal to zero to two seconds. So this first bit over here and from t is equal to two seconds to t is equal to seven seconds, which is this uh, second portion of the graph. First portion, we can see that the velocity is increasing, so there's definitely acceleration. Additionally, the um, VT curve is getting steeper. We can imagine this, if we were to draw a tangent at every point, we can see that the tangent actually gets steeper. Now remember in a V against T graph the tangent is the acceleration and if that's getting steeper well that means that the acceleration is increasing. So from T is equal to 0 from, to T is equal to 2 seconds we have increasing acceleration. For the rest of the graph we can see that the velocity is decreasing at a uh, linear rate. So that means that the rate of change of velocity is constant, therefore the acceleration is constant or uniform and uh, what we can say that from t is equal to 2 seconds to 7 seconds that there is constant deceleration or constant negative acceleration, so constant deceleration. Like so. Okay, okay, folks. So hopefully acceleration makes sense now. Uh, if there are any questions about anything that we've gone over today, please feel free to drop a comment down below and please consider subscribing.